Welcome back to Cold Antler Farm. This is vlog number 40, and we're going to be talking today about introducing your baby chicks to the big wide world. So what's new with our demonstration chick? Well, let me explain a couple of things. One, even more of these feathers are coming in. Look at along the back, those feathers that would line the bird's back and uh, what's called the cape of the bird right here, kind of the mane of the bird, you're fine. These are all coming in just fine. The bird has, contained, has kept a, a healthy beak, healthy eyes, healthy, healthy overall body condition. This little buff Orpington is starting to get feathers in her uh, head, and some of this baby fluff is finally moving entirely out. You can see an overall uh, change in the quality of the feathers on the wing. They're coming in even more. I know, I know. Um, and breast feathers are starting to come in as well. So this little girl is doing great. So why put the birds in a wire cage? Well, I have three reasons. The first reason is the chick's safety. The chicks are at the age where they are the most delicious treats to walking by predators. Anything from a feral cat to foxes to coyotes possibly or aerial predators. They are small and tasty and delicious. Another reason, look at all the things going on around them on this small farm. There are turkeys, there are cats, there are dogs, clearly. There are other chickens and roosters and animals that are not used to them. Uh, if a bunch of young birds are just let out loose on a farm, there's a good chance that the other chickens are going to chase them away, peck at them, or just be threatened by them, or even worse, uh, kill or attack them. So what we, what I always do is I make sure that these chicks have a place where they're safe from both the domestic animals and wild predators, while still having time to chew on grass that comes up through the bottom of the wire cage and feel sunlight and learn what it's like to kind of get used to regulating their body temperature. Chicks need to be weathered off just like uh, to plants that you raise in a greenhouse. You raise these seedlings, especially uh, warm weather plants like tomatoes and peppers. You raise them in a controlled environment, just like you raise chicks in a brooder. And then you slowly introduce them to the outdoors by taking them out of the greenhouse for uh, maybe a day, a nice day like this. And then they come back into the greenhouse at night. And that process is called hardening off. You harden off chicks just like you harden off tomato plants. And this gradual increase of time outside can, can eventually lead to them spending the whole day outside in the cage and then going in for the night in the brooder and then spending the whole day outside and then being collected and put in the brooder maybe with the lights off. Slowly they get used to just being tougher birds. So these birds here are going to spend most of today outdoors. They're going to just get used to the way wind feels underneath their feathers, they're going to get used to even it getting a little chilly as it gets lower uh, in temperature later in the day. I want to come out here just before dark and see if they have the wits about them to huddle up for warmth in a pile. They, they should, of course, but it's nice to make sure that these birds have a little bit of common sense since they've been living in such a controlled environment so long. Do they know to just take care of each other? The next step after this cage brooder is to go into a small controlled space, an outdoor pen that is again protected. They're still going to be a third to half the size of their adult bird cells. Other birds need to get used to them. So a small wire cage pen with their own outdoor feed and water and shelter from the rain, that's going to be the next step. Um, sometimes I've skipped this step entirely and I've just put birds that are feathered out in the coop. And what I've learned is that if they're not raised by chickens outdoors from uh, chick stage, like uh, the antlerborns that are raised here at the farm, they don't they don't really do well. They kind of nest on the floor instead of up in the roost. They're the first things picked off by predators. So unless I want to buy three or four times the chickens I want come fall, a little more protection as they get up the maturity ladder is what I suggest. Thanks for watching another video from Cold Antler Farm. 40 episodes already. Can you believe it? Uh, next up, we're going to talk about something a little different on the next video about things this farm goes without. Things like microwaves and a television and a coffee maker and a cell phone, which uh, I do for various reasons, but not the ones you might think. So, 
more on a little bit of lifestyle next time. Thanks for watching.